Okay, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to use C Sharp to get user input and perform math calculations and display output on screen. In this uh, problem, that's it in a nutshell. The long form, we're going to design a program in C Sharp that asks the user to imp input numerical information. The program performs calculations and provides output on the screen. We're going to have the, have the output display and currency where appropriate. If you need WordPress hosting, I provide WordPress hosting for as low as $5 a month. I actually provide quite a bit more now. You can see WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Moodle, Mambo, PrestaShop, PHP, BB. These have an installer to install them for you. There's no special knowledge needed. I provide hosting accounts as low as $5 a month. I also provide virtual private servers and dedicated servers. And if you want a $5 account, if that's what you're looking for, you just simply click on the shared plans and you'd see it right there at the starter. Here's the actual problem we're going to do, the programming problem. We're going to write a program that computes the amount of money that the computer club will receive from the proceeds of their candy sales project. They sold 37 cases, which had 12 bars per case. The candy bars were sold for 75 cents each. Each case costs five dollars. They are required to give the student government association ten percent of their earnings. Display proceeds and formatted in currency. Now, the steps that are needed to display these proceeds, we're going to have to determine the cost of goods sold, uh, the cost of the candy bars. We're going to have to determine how many candy bars, the amount of candy bars that were sold. We need to determine the total amount they received from the sales from their candy bars. We're going to determine the gross, gross profit, which is their total proceeds received from the sales minus cost of goods sold. And then we're going to determine their net profit. That's the profit they will have after they pay their student government association dues. Okay, I'm not going to take the time to type in each code here because it's quite a bit of typing, but we'll go over it. So let me just select it here. We'll fire up Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. We're going to create a new project. We're going to select C Sharp. We're going to do this from the console application. And we're going to give this a, a name. We're going to call it Candy Bar Sales. And I'm going to go ahead. I want to get my Explorer window open because I want to change the name of my class here. So we're going to other windows. We're going to, or excuse me, the Solutions Explorer. And I want to rename this so I can change my class everywhere where it needs to be changed. So I'm going to rename it over here on this side. We're going to call it. I want you to notice that it's going to be the same as this right here. And we're just going to say, yeah, would you like to rename everywhere where it needs this to be renamed at? And just select yes. And we got this class here now, Candy Bar Sales. Now, let me see, did I already copy this? Make sure I copied it. We're going to go in here and we're going to... You notice, well, before we do that, you notice that uh, Visual Studio for C Sharp puts in this initial code here. This is actually more than what you need. Uh, really, you could get rid of this part here. And you can get rid of this part here. But I'm of the opinion, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, it's going to do it every time. It's not hurting anything just to leave it all there. But, you know, if you're in class, your teacher might want you to get rid again. This part here, because we just need to call the system library. And this part here, you know, if because it is a void function. So we don't need anything right there. All right, we're putting in the code here. And the first thing I'll check is do I got any errors down here? No, I don't because it will tell you the errors as you put the code in. All right, we're going to look at console write line. Console write line is a method. In C, in C++ it would have been called a function. It's calling from the library, the library that's already in place. And you notice here we're going to ask the user to enter the amount of the candy bars. Enter the amount of cases of the candy bars. And we're going to give that, the answer here is going to be this variable right here, total amount of cases. We're going to declare the variables as we go in this program. There are other ways to do it. This is just the way I'm doing it for 
this particular video. And here, because much of what we're going to be using has decimal points, we're going to uh, use a double. You can use a float or a double. Double is the standard for C sharp. If you use a float, you have to add extra characters in your code. I'm not even going to go into that because double is the standard. But because this is a string, oftentimes called string literal, that the user will be input, we need to parse this double. So it will will take it from a string and turn it into a double. So when a user enters the total amount of cases, it's going to throw it into this little spot right here. Then it's going to throw that information over here as a double. It's going to throw it right here. And I'm just going to run it real quick so we can see what's happening. We're just going to run the first couple lines here. So we'll go up here. So you notice we have this here, enter the amount of cases of candy bars. So we had 37 cases according to the problem. And enter the cost per case of candy bars as a decimal. And if you recall, they were $5 per case. So here we notice that the total cost of the candy bars is $185. Now before we go on, I want to look at this. You'll notice here, again, uh, the user entered the amount of cases. The user entered the cost per case. And both times it put the answer that the, the user provided into the spot right here on each one of those questions. And it put it over onto the variable that we created as we go here, the variable. And it parsed it to make sure it was a double instead of a string. Because it, you can't work a string. A string's not going to work where these numbers are required. You need it to be a double. And obviously we have our comment here to let us know what we're doing we're finding out the cost of goods here all right now you noticed on this we have a dollar sign here at the 185 and we come to this point here we get the variable cost of goods which was the total amount of cases times the per case cost uh, so we had 37 cases times $5 a piece is $185. It put that over here onto the variable we use for cost of goods sold. It put that total there. And it displayed that total amount here. So we put in between the these right here, quotation marks, what we wanted it to display. The total amount of candy bars is... Notice the special characters here. This is for currency format. This way we get us our dollar sign. We put that there. Uh, the uh, curly braces, zero, colon, and then C for currency, and curly brace. And then I just put this character here to, for separation. And then you need a space. You need that space there before the quote. That's going to separate one space between this and this. Now I have this comment here, which I'm about. I'm I'm going to comment out this line. If you didn't need the dollar sign to, to appear, you don't need to format it in currency. Instead of doing this right here, then your quotation mark and a comma and cost of goods, we could have done this right here without this part and just plus cost of goods. Let me show you how that works. We're going to just not. We're not going to get the dollar sign, basically. So we have 37 cases, at $5 per case. And there, the total cost of the candy bars is 185 So you, if you didn't need a dollar sign there for whatever reason, you could have done that. But I like the dollar sign there because we're dealing with dollars here. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that. Comment this one back out. I'll just use that for demo purposes. And you notice we go down to the next section. We're going to determine the amount of the candy bars sold. So we're going to ask the user to enter the total amount of candy bars per case. If you recall from the problem, that is 12 candy bars per case. It's going to take that answer 12. It's going to put it right here. That string, it's going to take the string 12. You notice it says even when you hover over it, it says string. And it's going to put it right here into that slot right there. And you'll notice it goes in there, even as you hover over, as a string. 
But here, we're going to parse, converse the string represent, representation of a number to its double precision floating point number equivalent. In other words, it will convert it to a number, to a decimal. And it's going to take that answer and it's going to put it on a variable here that we have declared. And then once we've done that, we got the total amount of candy bars per case. We're going to determine how many candy bars that is. So we have the total candy bars per case times the total amount of cases, which is 12 candy bars per case times 37 cases. And we're going to display that answer right here. So the total amount of candy bars are right here. You don't necessarily need this to solve that problem, but I, like, I just did it as an extra step. So let's do this again. So we have 37 cases at $5 per case. So we have a total of $185 is what our cost is for so far. So we're going to enter the total amount of candy bars per case. And it's going to tell us there are 444 candy bars total. Now the next part we're going to do is determine the amount of sales we did from the candy bar. Determine the total amount of sales again. We're going to ask the user, as you just seen, we're going to, it's going to be a string, the total amount of candy bars. It's going to put that string right here. Answer right there, which is going to be 444 candy bars is what they sold because they sold all five cases. And it's going to turn that string into a... Uh, decimal or fractional part number whatever however you want to call it and it's going to put that answer right onto our variables then we're going to enter the price of each candy bar that was sold now if you recall from the original problem we sold them for 75 cents a piece they're going to enter 75 cents going to enter as a string we'll put that string right here it's going to parse that and turn it into a decimal or to a number and then it's going to take that number 75 cents and throw it on our variable here down here, we're going to get the total candy bar sales, which will be the total amount of candy bar sold, which is 444 times 75 cents per candy bar. It's going to take that and throw it onto that variable right there. It's going to take what's in that variable right here. And again, we got to format it to get a dollar sign. We're going to display total candy bar sales is dollar sign this variable right here, which you recall, was the amount of this and this multiplied together. So let's take a look at that. Going to that step. Enter total amount of candy bars sold. Well, we sold them all. See, that's why I said we could have skipped this step here and just entered 444. But, it's, you know, I just wanted to find out how many candy bars there were total. And the price, we're going to enter as a decimal point, 75 cents. So our total candy bar sales was $333. Now, it went ahead and did this before I explained it, but the next part we wanted to determine, which is no input needed from the user at all, we need to determine the gross profit. This is what profit was made after the cost of goods sold or after the cost of the candy bars. Well, if you recall, the candy bars cost $185. Total sales, 333 So what we got here is gross profit. We declared that variable, gross profit. It's going to take. Total candy bar sales minus the cost of goods sold. It's going to throw it onto that variable. And we're going to show the user the gross profit from the candy bar sales is, and we got again our currency format. It's going to give us the dollar sign, comma, gross profit. We took the variable there. So it's going to display, like you see right here, gross profit from candy bar sales is $148. That's 333 minus 185. All right, next thing we need to do is find out the net profit. In order to find out net profit, we're going to take our, uh, gross profit from the candy bar sales, and we're going to subtract 10% from that because that's what we owe to Student Government Association, if you recall from the initial profit. You'll notice here we got, I, I gave it a variable, the SGA dues, which is gross profit times the dues. If you recall, the dues are 10%. And we're going to give it a variable called net profit. So net profit is going to take your gross profit minus the dues. It's going to give you your totals, and this is how it works. We got 10%. So what we owe, we're going to enter as a decimal, 0 0.10. Total amount of dues owed is $14.80. Subtract that from 148, leaves us 133.20. And at the very end. I have a pause program. Just put console.read in there 
with open and closing parentheses and a semicolon at the end. That keeps the screen from shutting out on you. It would run, if you didn't have that there, the screen would go blank. You would never see none of this. But then you just hit the enter bar to close your screen out, and it stops the debug. You can get this actual code at my website at www.skeeterz71.com. Just put the title that we put on the original here in the search box if it's not on the front page when you go there. Put any part of this title in there in the search box. You should be able to pull up this particular post with this video, with this code, with this problem and the code that is in here. And that's all there is to it. You have a good day.